Can you describe how you collaborated with other student government branches, particularly your relationship with student body president uh, Bobby Mills? <laughs> Um, oh man, okay, so flashback to that night in April where they're announcing the results. I'm jumping out of my chair, jumping for joy, tapping my hat to, to John Chiswalk's folks. Um, Bobby was not part of the group of people that I was supporting. You know, I was supporting Locke Whiteside for Chief Justice, he won. I was supporting Dave Fox for Treasurer, he won. I was supporting myself, of course, I won. And all of us were supporting Adam Compton who was the, the top vote getter in the first election, but then lost by 101 votes in the runoff. It was like an agonizingly small margin. Um, and so, you know, we already have Bobby's not part of our slate. I institutionally have always hated the student body presidency. Like, as an institution, I despise it, because most of the student body presidents I've known start out as good people and they get into office, but then, you know, just really just become crooked. You know, just crooked as can be. So, you know, as an example, the whole thing with the pirate captain, this dude came in talking about he was going to be an advocate for students' rights, but then when we had Dr. Stafford saying part-time students shouldn't be allowed to vote, the pirate captain said, you know what, I agree with Dr. Stafford. I'm like, what? These guys pay fees. You know, you should, you should be entitled to vote regardless because you're a student, but especially if you're paying money. You know, last I checked, no uh, taxation without representation was like something going back to the 1700s. Um, so I just, I really hated the student body presidency. So that night, he comes up to me, shakes my hand to congratulate me. And, um, you know, I shook his hand back and I said, you know, Bobby, congratulations. I know it was a hard campaign. Just know now, I'm not taking any shit off the executive branch. Those are my exact words. And he kind of gave me the raised eyebrow. I was like, it's all good, brother. We'll be fine. We'll work it out. Um, and for most of the first few months, we actually got along fairly well, you know. April, we got his, uh, his officers confirmed. He and I went to a meeting that the um, UNC General Administration had for the state legislators down at the Museum of History. He brought me along to that even though he didn't have to. Um, and, and we got along fairly well. Things started getting um, off track, if you will, when stuff started going south with the Statewide Association of Student Governments. So Bobby had set me down in June and uh, he laid out for me what he called his five-year plan. He was going to be student body president year one, was going to get reelected as student body president year two, and during that year would also become council, uh, president of the Council of Student Body Presidents, or chairman rather, uh, in ASG. Then year three, since he would be the only returning student body president that year, year three he would be in law school at Carolina and would be ASG president would be ASG president again in year four, and then year five, he was going to graduate from law school, go move down to the coast, and run for the General Assembly. This, this was the five-year plan that he had outlined for me. And I'm like, okay, I understand people planning. I'm thinking in the back of my mind, dude, when I came here with my five-year plan, I was going to be done with college in three years making a million dollars, and so I dropped out. But, you know, I didn't mention that to him. So that was his plan in June. I was fine. No big deal. We get to July. And I am in Wolf Village in my boxer shorts and a t-shirt vacuuming my carpet. And I get a phone call and it's Bobby. I'm thinking something's wrong. No one ever calls me on a Saturday. So I answer the phone. You know, I'm like, hey. And he's like, hey. And he goes, um, you know, can you do me a favor? And I was like, well, it depends on what the favor is. He goes, as Senate President, you appoint one of the two discretionary delegates to ASG. Can you appoint a black guy? Because I need an inroad to the HBCUs. And I, I damn near dropped my phone. You know, I'm like, what? You know, I'm living with three other black guys, and you're telling me the only way you can get into an HBCU is if you have a black delegate, when, one, you could appoint one yourself. So from an institutional standpoint, that ticked me off. But then, two, how obtuse are you that you think the only way you can talk to black people is to have a black guy go with you? You know, I'm living with three of them. They're not scary, you know? And, and from that point on, I was just, I, I could not believe that I had been asked that on the phone. And I'm like, Bobby, we're not going to have this discussion. If you have someone in mind that you want to appoint for your delegate, you appoint them. I have someone in mind for mine, I'm going to appoint mine. That's how this whole division of power thing works. And really from that point on, I just got really, he just, he really just kind of pissed me off. So that was July. We get to August. President of the UNC Association of Student Governments has been charged with, um, Kidnapping, no, not kidnapping, it's breaking and entering, assault on a female, and assault with a deadly weapon because of some stuff that none of us knew anything about that had happened back on Valentine's Day um, before he'd even taken office. And 
everyone in ASG is talking about, we're going to go to the trial, we're going to see what's happening, we're going to see what's happening, because the president had not yet been sworn into the Board of Governors because the board was not going to have someone potentially convicted of a crime sitting on the board. So his trial is happening like the first week in August. It's out in New Bern, and Bobby's like, you know, I'm going to go. I heard Chapel Hill and UNC Greensboro and all these other folks are going. I think NC State should be there. It's like, you know what, that's a really good idea. I'm going to go too. Day of the trial, drive it east, past East Carolina, get about 30 minutes outside of New Bern, and I get a phone call. And it's from um, a guy named Eric, who's a reporter for the Daily Tar Heel. And he goes, you know, I wanted to be there to cover the story, but I can't get out of my job. I can't be there. Can I have you let me know who attends so I can get their information? I said, sure. I get maybe 30 seconds after hanging up with him, get a text message from Bobby. Hey, man, I can't make it. Another minute and a half goes by, I get another text message from a friend out in UC Greensboro, hey, my folks decided it's not worth the trip. I get to the courthouse in New Bern. No BS. I am literally the only person in the entire state of North Carolina that is not the judge, the clerk, the attorneys, or the parties. I'm the only other extra person there. Like I, You have the rows of benches, I'm the only one sitting there through this trial. And you know, I, I'm not in law school. I know I'm going to law school. I understand basics of how stuff goes. As the trial is going on, it's like this, it's, it's a lot deeper than anyone had really told me in my role as Senate President through ASG. You know, you hear all the rumors and everything else, you read what's in the paper. The actual story was a lot more elaborate. And they're going through the trial, and you know, the, the, the female that he was accused of assaulting basically said she hit him first and he pushed her away, and that was the assault, was him trying to defend himself. The breaking and entering was him stepping into the house of, uh, you know, his kid's mother to get his son. And then the assault, oh, I'm sorry, let me cut that off, that's my parking meter. Um, and then the assault happened when apparently he tried to go with the kid somewhere and the aunt, like, grabbed onto the door handle and was running alongside the car and tripped. Because he didn't stop the car, that was assault with a deadly weapon. And I'm thinking to myself... You know, the aunt admitted to hitting him. The grandma admitted to like biting his arm multiple times and breaking one of his windows with a crowbar. She grabbed onto the handle. That's all the dead weapon. That was just like that's whole story. That's a whole other issue. I will let y'all go through the technician archives for that. Long story short, he's he's convicted of assault with a deadly weapon, which is like the one charge that I'm like I can't see that happening. Assault with a female, okay, I get that. Breaking and entering, okay, I get that. Assault with a deadly weapon makes no sense to me. But that was what he was found guilty of. The other two were dismissed. So. Again, only person in the state of North Carolina to actually see the trial, which I kind of regret because I had since been subpoenaed to testify in the appeal because I was the only person that saw what happened because in district court there's no video record. Um, so I get back to NC State, and now that he's been convicted, everyone knows he's never going to be sworn into the Board of Governors. And um, ASG refused to make a decision as to whether or not they're going to ask him to step down. They had like this multi-hour meeting that they closed to the public in total violation of the open meetings law. And I found out a year later that the vote was like, you know, six to ask him to resign, three to say no, and the other three didn't care, and then like five didn't show up. Just completely fractured decision, no leadership at all whatsoever. Bobby, really, I, I don't know, I guess this was gonna advance his five year plan, I don't know what it was, but essentially Bobby said, you know what, we're gonna demand that Cole Jones step down. And I was like, who is we? He was NC State. I was like, dude, you weren't even at the trial. I thought the guy got screwed, personally. I'm like, there's zero chance, zero, that I'm going to endorse Cole Jones stepping down. And he goes, well, I'm going to demand he step down. I said, fine, I'm going to write a resolution saying we support him. And what happened was that we wrote this resolution, we filed it in the Senate, and the debate goes on for at least an hour. Like, there was a motion to extend debate twice. And I was really getting ticked off because I see Bobby next to me, and he's on AOL Instant Messenger, typing to senators, telling them what to say. And I'm like, this is dragging on debate. No one's going to change their mind. We all know who, how's everyone's going to vote. I know it's going to pass because I've talked to people beforehand. Let's just vote and get it over with. So finally, one of the senators says, I move to end debate. Let's vote. We get to the roll call portion where we're voting. And Bobby goes, wait a minute, I can't speak? I said, dude, you had an hour's worth of opportunity. No. He goes, well, I'm going to speak now. I gavel him out of order. I said, you're out of order. We're in the period of vote. You can't talk now. He goes, well, I'm going to talk over you. So I gavel him out of order again. I say, Sergeant at Arms, please escort the student body president from the chambers. Um, and ironically, the Sergeant at Arms was Jay Dawkins, who would end up beating Bobby in the election. Um, 
But essentially, Jay comes up and is like, you know, Bobby, you got to go if you're not going to behave. Bobby's like, I, I hate this resolution. I oppose it. Cole Jones needs to resign, blah, blah, blah. I'm banging my gavel. Uh, Dave, the treasurer, stands up and is like, you're not respecting the rules that we follow. The senators are like yelling about to jump over tables and everything. And long story short, Bobby is escorted from the Senate hall. And then the next morning, technician runs a story like, you know, Greg Doucette, with his vendetta against the student body president, had him booted from the Senate chambers. And I'm like, okay, you know, it's technician news, I'll leave them alone. Um, but from that point on, things went progressively south. Um, you know, the September ASG meeting, they didn't have quorum. The October ASG meeting, they didn't have quorum. The November ASG meeting was at NC State, where I had personally called myself, every president, to say, hey, can y'all show up? We finally get quorum for a meeting. And Bobby, in his president's meeting, advocates abolishing the General Assembly, which is the legislative branch of ASG. He goes, I move we abolish it. Not only did he move to abolish it, and this is part of the props that I brought, actually wrote a letter that he gave to everybody saying he wants to get rid of the only deliberative body that exists on a statewide level. So at this point, it's just there's so much going on. The dude shows up late to meetings. He wears you know, his whole sweaty athletic attire everywhere. He's told the Senate that he had a voting member on the tuition committee. He made Scott Laster the voting member. Scott Laster gets to the tuition committee meeting, and they're like, oh, you're just a non-voting observer. You know, the whole BS with uh, the stuff in the Senate chambers, then this later trying to abolish the legislative branch. I've got senators who are coming up to me going, I want this dude impeached and removed from office. And I'm like, I do too. The problem is that if he's removed, I become student body president. I don't want that job. Um, so what we ended up doing was uh, I convinced them to, instead of doing it as an impeachment, they do it as a censure, where they just kind of like lay out all of the stuff he screwed up on. We throw it on, you know, into a resolution, and uh, when it comes up for debate, the Senate just like shelves it without considering it. And it was, it was funny because as people were, the technician staff was covering the vote, the vote was so lopsided to not even talk about it that they were like, oh, Greg didn't do his homework, this is a Senate's repudiation of President Doucette. And uh, at the end of the, the meeting, Adam Compton stands up and he goes, you know, I thought what we did today was very unfair. Now that we've never considered it, this resolution in its original unedited form will last for all eternity on our website. And when you go Google Bobby Mills' name, you will see all the things that he's done wrong. And like, standing in Senate President, you could see across the Senate his supporters just go, because sure enough, when Bobby knew he was going to run for re-election, when people go Google his name, they don't see the Bobby Mills campaign. They see SR 65, Bobby Mills Century Act, which is just like this multi-length list of stuff he's done wrong. And it just, it got worse from there. Like we dealt with camp out and, um, you know, there was this whole issue of whether or not it was fair to not let people get tickets if they didn't camp out, even though we had done that literally for decades. So Dr. Stafford had been having conversations with Bobby saying, I think we should take away some of the camp out tickets and give them by, randomly to people who don't camp out. And Bobby's like, I think that's a great idea. And I guess one of his assistants saw that email, and at that point, even though there was an assistant, they were just like, okay, Bobby's crazy. Forwarded the email to the technician, who in turn forwarded it to me, and I'm like, what the flying flip is going on right now? Campouts in like two days, and you're telling us that you're taking away like 2,000 tickets. Jay was the chairman of our campus community committee in charge of campout. I said, you know, Dawkins, are you aware of this? And he goes, no, but I'll figure out what we got to do. So this was like at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. He is steadily trying to get in touch with Dr. Stafford all night long. He ends up getting a hold of him at like 1 o'clock and talks with Dr. Stafford until 3 in the morning. And then finally agrees, okay, we'll let the campout ticket thing, we'll, we'll keep it the way it is. But I'm like, you know, I, I don't want to say I dislike Bobby. He's a nice guy. But really, to, to your original question, how much did we collaborate, we really didn't. Because from April to June, everything was fine. Really starting in July, I was just like, dude, you can't be serious. You, you, just, you are why I dislike the institution of the student body presidency. And it just kind of has snowballed from there. So that, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was, in essence, my first term. I know that was a much longer answer than you expected. Um, but as an upside... I think that kind of led the way for Jay Dawkins to be student by president, and I think Jay is probably the gold standard as far as SBPs go, because he just he did a phenomenal job.